In this guide, we're going to learn quite a bit about how to work with authentication in React and how to pass props between components. So right now we have our app component, a home component, and a registration component, and we know our registration process works. However, we have to let the rest of the application know. And so we're going to walk through exactly how to do that. We're going to start out by learning about a concept called the render prop and specifically how you can use it inside of React Router. Now the reason for this is because our route definitions right here, this is our gateway for being able to pass data directly into any of the components. Now if you use a tool like Redux, then you don't have to build your structure like this. And really, if you use Redux, then you can simply pass in your registration data up to Redux, update the state there, and then be able to use it in any component. However, Redux, in my opinion, is overkill in a very significant percentage of the applications it's integrated in. It's quite a bit more work, quite a bit of boilerplate code to write. So what I'm going to show you does not require Redux at all, and your components still will all have the ability to know if the user is logged in or not. So we're going to get started with being able to work with the render prop. And so what we can do inside of a route component here is we can actually override the props that are sent to our React router component. So let's start by adding a constructor here. And we're going to call super and then establish some base state. So I'll say this dot state equals and we'll have a logged in status and I'm going to start off with a constant of not logged in and then we can also pass in a user which is going to start as a empty object. Eventually we can populate this user with actual data coming back from the API so that you could use it. You could do things like grab a email address or a avatar or anything like that. So now that we have that, now let's test this out and see how we can pass data from our parent app component into one of these routes. I'm going to start by getting rid of the component call here and I'm going to simply call render and I'll give us a little bit of room here because we're about to start writing a decent amount of code. So we still keep exact, we keep path, but now we have this render call and it's a normal prop. So I can say render equals and then inside of curly brackets props and then that's going to take a fat arrow function and then parentheses. Make sure to not use curly brackets right there or else it will not work. So inside of parens, we are going to call our actual home component. So what a render prop allows you to do is actually pass in and call the component directly, just like you would in JSX, but you have the ability to now add additional props to what are being sent. So I can say home, We'll take all the current props and we'll spread them over inside of a curly bracket. And so that allows us to take all of the route props, all the things that it has by default. And now we can add on to it. So I'm going to add on a new prop called logged in status, and it's going to be equal to this dot state dot logged in status. And then we will close off this component. Now let's test this out just to see if it's working. If you go into home, we now need to define our prop. So I need to call a constructor, if I can spell it correctly, and get our props and then call super. So we have access to the props and then inside of here, instead of having home for the two here, H2 here, I'm going to say status and then let's call our prop. So we'll say this dot props dot logged in status. Okay, let's test this out and see if it's working. We should have a H2 tag or H1 tag now that has logged in status of not logged in on our home page. So if you come to Google Chrome, there we go. So that's pulling in properly. Let's do the same thing on our dashboard page 
to get a little bit of practice in using the render prop and also so that when we redirect because we're about to do that I want to be able to quickly see what the state of logged in status is so I'm gonna pretty much duplicate exactly what we did here so with the route I'm gonna format this so it's a little bit easier to read and then let's just come here bring our entire render prop and the only difference we need to make is now we call the dashboard component instead of home component hit save now and if you navigate to the dashboard you'll see that we have dashboard and now we need to actually call dashboard and add in props this is not a class component so we don't have to create a constructor or anything we can just say that it's going to accept props and then in this h1 tag we'll say the status is going to be props dot logged in status and that is all that we need to do there in the dashboard it now says not logged in so everything there is working perfectly you now have the ability to pass data from your app component directly into any of the routes so with this in place, now we're ready to start performing our other processes, such as being able to have our registration component pass up the event. So right now, all we're doing is we're console logging registration data. And we can test this out just to see what that data looks like. So if you come to the console here, you can type in anything that you want for your registration and then click register you'll see we get registration response here of data status created and then we also get the user object with our email and all of those kinds of things you may also notice our password is completely encrypted and so that's one of the things that our rails application does so it's not a problem getting access to this because unless someone has your secret key there's no way for them to be able to reverse engineer this and to see what the password was. So let's, now that we have that, now let's see what we need to do to pass data up. And I'll give you a hint, it also has to do with props. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to call a prop that we haven't created yet. Our registration component is nested inside of our home component. So I am pretty confident that I can create a prop after this. And I'm gonna call this dot props and then from here I can simply call whatever function was handed down as a prop so earlier we passed state in as a prop but now we can actually pass a function and then call that function so I'm gonna say this dot props dot handle successful and auth we'll call it that and then I'll pass in response dot data now I only want this to happen if the account was actually created so i'll say if response dot data dot status is triple equals to the string of created then i want you to perform this task now in your own applications you would want to have this conditional and if you did not get back a created status then you'd want to perform some task such as populating a error message so you can add right up here and i gave you a placeholder for it for registration errors you can just update state with that render it on the page i will leave that up to you and your own implementation so now that we have that let me first triple check yes we so we are receiving props for this registration and now we need to define this prop inside of home and then pass it to our registration component so let's first bind it to this so this dot handle successful auth equals this dot handle successful auth dot bind pass in this and then create the function so handle successful auth it receives data remember it receives that user data and so inside of here we're going to perform two key tasks so the very first thing that we need to do is it needs to be able to call the parent app component so let me just add a little to do here so i'm going to say to do 
update parent component, and we're going to use render props once again for that. And now with that in place, we also need to redirect the user. So for that, what I can do is I can call this dot props dot history dot push, and then as a string slash dashboard. This is something available to us because home is defined inside of a route. If you're curious on how we got access to history, because, and this is something really important to know and understand with how React Router works, is inside of our home component here. When we called the render prop and I passed in the spread operator with props, we were saying take all of the current props that React Router has, because we're inside of a route component, take all of those props and also include them. So don't override the props. We simply want to tack a few more on, and that's what we're doing right here. And so we have these props. That is how we have access to call this dot props dot history. Okay, so we're, this is how we redirect the user. So the goal is they're successfully registered. As soon as that process takes place, they're gonna be redirected to the dashboard. So now we have to pass in this handle successful auth function here as a prop to registration. So I'll say handle successful auth equals this dot, oh, that was some weird autocomplete, this dot handle successful auth. There we go. And so now this will actually work and we can test it out. We don't have to update our user logged in state or anything like that yet. So let's verify this is working. So we're not logged in and I can go and add in some other user, give a password, password confirmation, hit register, and we are redirected to the dashboard. Notice we're still not logged in and that's fine, but we were redirected. So, so far, so good. Everything that we're implementing is working and now it is time to finish this up. So now we need to create a, another prop and this one's gonna come from the app component. And I will say from a best practice perspective, this is by far the highest number of props that you would want to pass for a single event. So typically in a best case scenario, you would structure your props and your components so that you're usually only sending when you have an event like registration, you're usually only sending a single prop message. If you start building this out more, then this is where it can start to get pretty messy. And this is the reason why I never have a system where I have any more than what's called a grandparent type of relationship. So right here, you can think of the app component as the grandparent component, and then it has a a parent component of home, and then registration is like the child component. So you have these three levels. If you can imagine, if you take this another level, that will start to get very messy from a data management perspective, especially when you're dealing with asynchronous behavior, such as communicating with the server. So for best practices, don't go beyond this point. But with what we have right here is perfectly fine. I have many production React applications that have this structure and they work great. So with all of this in place, now it's time inside of our home to now start defining the prop and this prop function that we're going to need to use in order to call the parent. So here, what I can do is I can say this dot props, because we know we're going to get this, we need to create it though. We're going to say handle login, and this is going to take that user data right here. So what we're doing is we're taking in this handle login, and it, we're going to be taking this in as a render prop, and then we are calling it, and we're saying, hey, I want you to go and grab the data, pass it to the app component. So now we need to add one more function here. So we're going to be passing handle login, which we haven't created yet, but we will. And this is going to take in this dot handle login as a function. And now we just have to come up and define it. So I'll bind it to this. So I'll say this dot handle login equals this 
dot handle login dot bind to this. And now we can have this function run. So handle login is going to update the state. It's going to take in data. It's going to change logged in status to logged in. And then the user is going to be populated with a real user. So this takes in data. And now we can say this dot set state. And then inside of here, we'll change logged in status to logged in. And then the user is going to be filled with the data. Okay, I believe I have everything in place that's necessary, but we will find out here in a moment. So right now, hit refresh, and then just create another user. Make sure it's a e email address that you've not used before because there is a validation, there could be a validation error on the server. So make sure that your email address when you're testing, that those are always unique click register. We have been redirected to the dashboard and you can see our status is logged in. So this is working perfectly. We now have, we've opened up the data communication between our registration component, our home and our master parent app component. And now we're able to update state and other components in the application like our dashboard now are aware of that logged in state. If you click on React, the React tools, if you have the React tools installed, which I highly recommend, and you inspect the application, click on app here, you'll see logged in status. This is the state inside of our app component. It's logged in and the user is the actual user. Now one quick little bug fix here. You notice that user is in our state, but we've actually wrapped our entire data object, which includes created there, which is not exactly ideal. Let's just fix this just so we don't have a bad piece of uh, state or bad piece of data rolling around. So I'm going to say data user and let's test this out one time. And so create another account. Hit register, we're back to logged in and take a look at your app component again. Now you can see our user is actually only the user. It doesn't have a nested set of objects. Completely up to you with how you want to structure it, but I think it makes sense for a user object to only contain user data. So that is the full registration component. That's everything that is needed and it's working nicely. Now next, what we're going to do is we are going to build out our sign-in functionality and then we're going to address in one of the next guides we will address this issue because if you hit refresh right now you'll notice the dashboard it switches to not logged in well that's for a good reason it's with the way that the system works when you hit refresh we start off with a base state of not logged in so we also are going to have to create a lifecycle hook that every time the application is loaded up, so when someone goes to the site, it will check to see if the cookie is installed. If it is, it will handle this update of state and it'll pass in the user object and then we'll be able to use them just like we registered. But before we get there, in the next guide, we're going to walk through how we can extend this behavior and we can create a login component.